Right. Today, we're going to talk about how you would troubleshoot a bad secondary neutral problem. Now, we had some great guys build this board for me, and then I added what's going to look like the utility transformer, then the riser service entrance, and then the water. Right now, there's nothing plugged in, nothing plugged in, and no light bulb. So if we went up here today, and measured voltage, and we have a complaint. The complaint is, my lights go dim and they go bright. We show up. We measure voltage with the meter in, but there's no load. And we'll measure 241.8, 120.9. And no one could argue. They would say, our voltage is good, everybody's happy. Now, we're going to add an external load. You're going to go and you're going to tell Miss Smith, Miss Smith, turn on your microwave. Miss Smith's going to turn on her microwave. Or in this key, case, my heat gun. And we're going to move it up to hot. One sixteen point five is the voltage drop. Now we're going to add this one point four ohm resistor, and we're going to create a resistive load connector right here. So you saw the voltage drop fall to one point one sixteen one sixteen point four. Now we're going to put that exact same load, but we have a resistive connector now. So if you went to Mrs. Smith's house and she wasn't there to add a load that could create a neutral imbalance, you'd never see that voltage difference between the loaded leg and the unloaded leg. So let's pretend that Mrs. Smith is not home. We have 242 and 121. Everything we did, we have not even used an amp meter yet to determine that there's no load. Nobody's home, we don't get to control what happens inside the house, so we bring our load box out. Our load box is going to get connected neutral, anywhere you want. Usually if you're above the disconnect panel, you'd be in the meter socket, meter would be laying on the ground. Okay, We're going to connect the neutral right here. That way I'll see everything that the neutral passes through, all the way back to the utility transformer. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to connect the hot lead. Anywhere you can pick up a hot lead. The location of the hot lead is not as important as the location of the neutral. You can see where I'm measuring here. Imagine that it's the bottom of the disc, uh, the bottom of the meter socket. Exactly the same. Now I'm going to bring on load with the neutral closed. The neutral is in good condition. 121.6, 122.7, and you're watching the loaded leg, or the unloaded leg. 123.3. Neutral's in good condition. We added 24 amps, and we watched the unloaded leg go to 123.3. Now I'm going to turn that load off and I'm going to put this 1.4 ohm resistor which could be a bad H-tap, a bad pin terminal, a dozen different types of resistive connectors. You saw that with no load I have that resistive connector built in and we didn't change the voltage. Now we're going to add this external load with this resistive connector built in. And it's only 1.4 ohms, not a big deal. 
We'll bring on a little bit. Seven amps. Seven amps took us to 130 volts. Now I'm going to bring in 15. I'm at 142. I'm going to bring in 24. I have 24 amps passing through this resistive connector and our unloaded leg has risen to 147. Let's go over and look at the other hot leg. When you get finished, those two numbers should both equal. The other leg fell to 89 volts. The loaded leg fell to 89 volts. And we're going to go over and I'm going to show you the load that that hot box has put on. That's the unloaded leg. This is the loaded leg at 18.9. 18.9, we have all three heating elements on, passing through this resistive load. So less than 20 amps, and we have pushed the voltage down on the loaded leg to below 90 volts. And you can imagine what's happening inside their house. Now, the other point that I want to make here is that depending on where you measure the neutral determines on the voltage reading that you get. So I'm going to take this neutral from the meter socket that's on the downstream side. So we come through, we go through the resistive block, we go through the resistor, we come back, we pass through the meter socket and go to the neutral bar. That's where I'm measuring to get 89 volts. Now I'm going to take this neutral connector and I'm going to put it on the transformer lug. I cannot see that bad connector now because I'm in front of it. This is voltage drop only caused by the 28 and the way this board's set up. So depending on where you put the neutral lug of your voltmeter, the neutral lead of your voltmeter determines what you see. Transformer, you cannot see the resistive connector. Come down here and we see it's below it. Voltage is 88. So if I pulled the meter, meter out and laid it on the ground right now, I would have no current flow. My voltage would be perfect. You would never find this resistive connector. So depending on where you choose to put this neutral lug of your voltmeter determines is it in front of it or behind it. So we're going to go from here. We see 88. We go to this bypass that I put in where I can actually open, still there. We're going to go to the high side of that resistor, or what I call the low side, 88. Now we're going to go to the other side of the resistor, and we see 113. We come and we take this voltmeter lead, two voltmeter leads. One is on the north side of the bad resistor, of the bad connector, and one's on the other side. This resistor has cost 25 volts worth of voltage drop. 25 volts is what it cost across this connector. If you watch the route, you can see the only thing that's on that wire is this resistor. So every time I'm looking for a bad connector, all I do is measure one side to the other. Any voltage above zero says that's a resistive load. Here, you can see the voltage from one end of this to the other cost 25 volts. So to wrap it all up, we'll put this one back on the hot lead, put this one back on the 